really like something, they can actually applaud you. So these emoticons are a way to actually convey uh, emotional uh, feedback to you. So if they don't really want to ask anything in words, they want to actually just kind of, in, in place of actually having facial expressions, they can actually choose emoticons here. Uh, now my, my experience with this is the students haven't really, they didn't really need to rely on this because I was training master students and they were very vocal. So they actually gave me uh, feedback via audio or chat, but maybe some of the more silent students may choose to use uh, these emoticon features. So you have the chat option, the emoticon option. The third option is if you go back to uh, next to this plus button and you go for, uh, you go for, sorry, uh, this one is quick poll, but I'll just show you start poll. Uh, sorry, uh, you go to the plus button, you go all the way to the first option here, start a poll you'll be given a screen where you can choose the way the students answer you. Note, what you are choosing is just the mode of the students answering you, whether they are selecting between yes or no, A or B, true or false, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E, all that. So let's say you want to get them yes or no answers, you click yes or no, then the students will be given a prompt to actually choose yes or no. Please take note, this feature does not present the question to the student you need to actually convey the question to the student audio, uh, by audio, by speaking, or by slides, or by some other means, any of the, the, the teaching tools, right? This is just, this poll feature is just a, a feature to get real-time feedback from a student in a uh, structured way, whether you want to ask, whether you want them to give you yes or no answers. And you say publish the polling result, uh, this real-time post, how many percent yes, how many percent no, all the students were able to see. So you were able to see the aggregate uh, response, that is the total response breakdown in the whole class, and you also be able to see individual users' response. So each student in the class that is in the session, you can see what they responded, yes or no. Okay, so let me repeat. If you go to actions, this big plus button here, you left click, you select start a poll, you left click, you are allowed to specify the way the student going to answer you, whether you have a multiple choice, whether it's five, four, three or two choices, as a yes, no or true, false, or if you want to customize your answers, you can actually customize your answers. Let's say if you have a technical question, you just want to actually put in a MCQ question, you're allowed to do that. The poll feature allows you to specify how the students respond to your question in real time you still need to give the question, whether you speak the question audio uh, verbally or whether you display the question via your slides or you write it down, you still need to give the question. This is just a mechanism for, the, for you to see in real time, your students are answering true, false, yes, no. You see the aggregate answers as well as the user responses individually. Okay. I have come to the end of presenting the BBB features. Uh, what? Uh, oh, yes, Dr. questions. Dr. Yes. Uh, this is not to be utilized as a quiz. Yes, exactly. Is it possible that we can record uh, the answers? Okay, uh, this is a great question. Uh, yes, this is a great question. Uh, let me try to answer this. Uh. You see, first, if you publish the poll, the percentage will appear on the slides. Now, if you click record video which we are doing now the poll results will be present in your video recording and you are also later able to download the poll results as a csv file so if you click record here these answers you can actually get a csv file as well as they'll be embedded between the bbb video so yes if you click record the session you will record all of this and we will go through uh, that part uh, in the next in the next uh, part after this. Uh, I hope that answered your question. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm going to stop my recording here because uh, it takes a while for BBB to actually put the recording online, and I would like um, all of you to be able to see our live session this morning, the recording online along with the poll result. Uh, so it actually depends on the length of your session. Uh, for a two-hour session, I've done a two-hour-plus session. It typically will be uploaded and ready between a day, lah. so maybe about an hour, two hours. But uh, in the last session I did with my department, uh, 
the recording was uh, about 15 minute recording was up like within the same one hour session. So so it doesn't come up immediately, the recording, but it will be, be, be there within a day. So give it a little bit of time, be a little patient. Okay, uh, more questions on the user interactive features. Uh, we've covered actually three. Uh, one was the public chat on the top left button here. Uh, be sure to click this if you want to see the list of chat and this will be scrollable. You can actually scroll up and down. Number two, you have the emoticons. Uh, students can give you all kinds of uh, emotional feedback. Hey, raising the hand, set of happy, thumbs up, thumb down, applaud. And number three, if you click this big plus button and you go for start or poll, you can run a poll to get feedback, which can also be used as many users uh, this morning have highlighted for your quizzes as well. So I'm just going to pause another minute or so to take any other outstanding questions. Uh, Dr. Ho. Yes. Uh, about this polling um, feature. Yes. Uh, can we like uh, key in the question, uh, not question, sorry, the, the answers, uh, the options earlier before class starts or something? Because otherwise then the students will be waiting while we type it in. You know what I mean? Because uh, the, yes, the options yes. are usually eight. I know what, what uh, you mean. So if you know, we do not want them to like uh, wait and waste their time. So could, could it be done earlier? Uh, I'm not sure. Let me quickly try it out now. Okay. Hello. Uh, no, uh, unfortunately, uh -huh. it's, they don't allow you to, to, to key this in uh, earlier. Earlier. Yeah, okay. Because I just did that. So, Mm -hmm. uh, I just tried out. So they don't allow you. So I think we have to be a bit clever. Maybe we have to maybe show them the slides first or run a video. And then while they are running the video, we set up the poll. We mm -hmm. have to do something like that. Right, uh, right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Thanks for the question. So no, we're not allowed to, to key that in uh, in advance. Uploading the slides, the documents, yes. Uh, if you were to set up your desktop with the software and the apps or your tablet software with the appropriate backgrounds, you can do this beforehand. But polls, no, unfortunately not. Uh, more uh, questions? Uh, yes. Dr. Ho, I have ahead. two questions. Yes. One is uh, on the poll. Can we cut and paste? Is the cut and paste feature uh, available? Uh, great question. I'm going to test it out now as well. <laughs> so I'm going. I'm, I'm typing something in Word. Uh, so I have a quick start poll, custom poll. I paste. Uh, mm, let me see. It doesn't seem to be working. Mm, it doesn't seem to be working on my computer. You could try, but I I cannot say uh, beyond that because my Microsoft Word has frozen and it doesn't seem to be working mm -hmm. for me. Okay, my second question is, uh, obviously student need to be, uh, to, to learn how to use this just like we are. Uh, yes. How do you do it? Ah, this is another million dollar question. Um, I think ITMS has prepared a bunch of uh, standard how to use features, uh, videos, that's one way. Myself, what I did was actually I introduced each session, I introduced uh, a new feature to them. So I, I don't use all the features. Uh, so I unf unfortunately, I only had managed to conduct one session with the students. So for that particular session, I only restricted them to public chat and to giving me vocal feedback. Uh, and then the poll, I think it's quite interactive. If you have a poll, they will just answer. That's not a problem. Uh, so my suggestion would just be to not overwhelm them. Maybe uh, it's more work for us, but we just have to plan to introduce new features uh, at uh, at a gradual pace. Nah? Because even if you ask them to listen to a whole video, it becomes another assignment, another chore for them. And uh, as an educator, I don't actually believe that we should be loading them so much. Lah. Like the using all these features should be something that's almost intuitive, that they are just walk into it very gradually. Uh, so that they can actually focus on the material. So my recommendation is actually uh, introduce one new feature per session. And uh, to me, it's not actually necessary for them to learn how to use all the features, whatever helps them only. 
So maybe if, if you were to find that maybe two or three interactive features you introduce to them and then you have students who are trying to get their opinion or something is a bit disruptive, and then you get an idea that they can actually use this feature, you can actually use that point to actually introduce the feature. Or you can actually plan it together with uh, maybe some activities, a sequence of activities in the semester. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, more questions? Yeah, Mr. Ho, I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, OK, uh, regarding Paul. Yes. If, if, if uh, one student want to, uh, what to, uh, what you say, give an answer for the poll, is this possible that particular student can see the answer from the other students as well about the particular poll? Uh, Yes, so let, let me go back to the poll. So now I'm I'm calling a poll. If you, if for instance, so what you do after you establish the poll, you you alone will be able to see the group answers as well as individual students' answers. Now take a look at this slide here. If you click publish polling results, then the poll results will be made available to the students, but only the group results. So you see that the poll result had actually appeared on the empty slide here. It appeared there. So the short answer to your question is, if you click publish poll results, it will be made available on the slide where you actually conducted the poll. If you do not click publish the poll results, it will not be available to the students. Okay, while while uh, answering the poll, the yes. particular student cannot see the poll result of the other students while uh, uh, answering the poll, isn't it? As long as you do not click uh, share the poll, they will not see the answer. Okay. If you Great. click share Great. the poll, they will see the answers. I just don't know whether this will be updated real time, but yours will be updated real time. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, more questions? Yeah, Dr. Ho. Yes. Putri here. I just wonder if the students are all very competent about using this BBB. Uh, so we can, can we assume that they know how to manage this? Uh, Thanks. Great question, Proputri. Um, I think you can assume that they are extremely comfortable with the chat feature because they are all WhatsAppers and Facebook messengers. So chat is uh, very comfortable for them. You can assume that they are comfortable seeing whatever you present here. As long as they can get into this uh, BBB uh, room, it should be no problem. And I think uh, it it is also not a problem because uh, it's not it's not difficult to get into the BBB room. Uh, okay, wait, hi. Uh, it's not difficult to get in the BBB room. It's just clicking two buttons, clicking the topic and clicking join session. Uh, so our students have fairly high IQ, so they should be able to do it. So viewing this and uh, putting chat, this is something is very intuitive to them. Shared notes. Uh, the concept of scribing may not be intuitive to them, so that might be a, little, may be a bit of a challenge. The emoticons, uh, once they get the hang of it, I think that will be something very easy for them. In fact, I think they'll like it. But uh, I myself, I although the concept is nice, I find that the emoticons are a little bit small, so I, I can't really differentiate. It doesn't really stand out to me as an educator. What I am a bit worried about is when you turn over control of a multi-user whiteboard, or if you actually get a disruptive student that uh, insists on either verbally uh, like like hijacking the session or verbally hijacking the presentation. But I think that's no different from a student hijacking a class, lah, which all of us would have experienced dealing it, although it's something that's very rare. Lah. So short answer is uh, to the extent that it's just viewing the session, giving audio feedback or uh, uh, typing their questions in chat, the students would be very comfortable using this. But if there were to be problems with maybe their microphone or they're not able to, to have their microphone, those troubleshooting issues, maybe among certain students, they may have problems. I think the default I recommend to all the colleagues uh, who are listening is uh, you should just assume BBB works a priori. And if it doesn't work, the most likely case is the student probably has a very poor internet connection. In which case, the recommendation would be, unfortunately, they cannot attend that session. They will actually have to watch the video at their own time. And if they have a very slow connection, 
maybe they have to wake up at 1 a.m. in the morning, 2 a.m. in the morning when nobody is using the internet, when the speeds are faster and they have to watch the video at that time. It's unfortunate. Lah. If you have a slow connection, you have to make those kind of sacrifices. Uh, but it's not a total loss. They will still be able to communicate with you. They can still go to the traditional ULEARN. Uh, they can still post their questions to forum or chat in ULEARN. Uh, that's still possible. You know, they, they can, you can actually create a forum in ULEARN, a chat session in ULEARN. Uh, here, let's say you add an activity or resource here. You can go for, uh, okay, you can go for, let's say you can go for forum, uh, chat. Uh, you can add a chat session in ULEARN. And then you just say, uh, again, you can put, let's say, the session name. Questions from BPB or offline questions. Okay, then you can display this description here. Save and return to course. So here again, you see that this is a chat. Offline questions. Students can go through this. This is not part of BBB, but they can enter the chat here. Uh, and this is not, this is uh, just like under chat. Hi, I have a question and they can send, right? So the students can send you this question and uh, you can view the, the chat session itself uh, or a forum. So you can always couple this if they are not able to come on real time with the more traditional chat and forum tools in ULEARN. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Ho? Uh, yes. Um, just to summarize, what you are trying to address here is that if we go to the big blue button, we uh, are yeah, basically everything is package in one. That's right. That's okay. right. Thank you for a very nice summary. Yes. Mm -hmm. Everything is packaged in one. And if you click record, everything is recorded and packaged. So that's why recording your session is your friend. If you don't like the session, you always have the option of deleting it later. But if you do not record, you will lose all these features. That is the features to download any poll results, the features to actually get a recorded version. Because what I'm also promoting is as we move to online dist open distance learning, especially now during the pandemic when we have to conduct our classes online, and then there's this issue whether MQA will come to audit, they want to know how. So our BBB recording of classes is, I would say, is the evidence par excellence for classes because the auditor will be able to see everything. It's basically they can relieve the entire class. They will know the date, the time, the duration. And, you know, I'll show you in a, a short while, example of a recording, they'll see everything. So even if you conducted 10 classes, the evidence is all there. So I'm actually trying to canvas to get support from among colleagues like you. Let us lobby our chair and ask ITMS to actually allow us to archive all of this. Because if we have all of this, then you know, it starts to have the question, you probably can use this for audit for any kind. Because when there's a question, when it's in doubt, just show the session. You automatically have all the students that have the session, the students, their feedback, everything is there. So even the recorded, how many sessions, you cannot lie with BBB, right? Because it's the number of hours is there, the date, the time, your, your presentation, your materials, everything, what you're showing, it's all there. So uh, this is a great tool. But uh, again, as some of the colleagues have highlighted, uh, the weaknesses are, at this point, we're not sure if there are any issues with uh, more students logging on, if there are any issues if some of our students have a poor internet connection, although ITMF has said 512 kbps is uh, good enough. So these are some of the issues that we'll have to work out uh, in process. But you need to know, uh, as uh, UTP staff, that this is a paid service which means that we have a right to demand from the vendor and the software a certain quality of service level. So UTP is actually paying per seat, meaning the number of students that come on board. UTP has put in uh, additional requests. That's why it took a bit of time uh, from uh, maybe the start of March. It took until April for ITMS to release this because uh, as I understand, part of the process was uh, they had to get the necessary internal approval, approvals and allocate additional budget to increase the seat count for BBB, for our students. Uh, no, no. Uh, yes, please. Okay, uh, I have a question here. All right. uh, so for this online session, right, how do we keep track of the students' attendance? Ah, 
That's a great question. Uh, so I, I know there was another parallel question. So let me answer this question first, and then we will go back to the other question. There's another gentleman with a question. So you can see now, this is another site. It's called ULEARNX. So UTP has this separate site with additional features for MSc students. And this is where I started uh, with BBB. Uh, so I'm going to show you now what happens when you pre-record a session. When you pre-record a session, you see uh, I had a session on 19 December 2019 at 3.50 p.m. for 145 minutes. And you basically can have two options. You can actually replay the video and replay the statistics. Now, I'll just go to the statistics page first to show you exactly uh, you have the attendance of the students. So you can see in this session, all the students who were present, their names are listed here. And not just the presence, the duration at which they were attending this online session. So you can see some students only attended one and a half hours, some did the whole two and a half hours. And then you can see exactly the time they actually joined, the time they actually left. Okay, so some students came in. Who came in late? Who came in early? Who left early? So this guy left late, came in late, he left early. This guy came in even later, he left even earlier. And you have an activity score here. So the most active students will have a larger number. The least active students will have a smaller number. And activity, I, I don't actually know what the numbers means, but it's an indication of how active they are. And how active they are is dependent on whether they were talking or they were messaging. And BBB automatically generate for me uh, the number of students who spoke, the number of students who message. And if you actually have poll results, the results will be listed here. And if you actually conducted a poll, you can also download, there will be a button here to say poll results. You can actually download the poll results here. But because in this particular session, I didn't have poll results, I don't have. So you can actually download all these statistics as a CSV file, just in case the auditor is fussy for some reason. But actually, I don't think you need to, because as long as you have access to this ULEARN, you can just show them the dashboard. This is good enough. Why do they need CSV and all this? It's not necessary, right? Uh, so all these statistics are generated for you automatically if you record the session. If you don't record the sessions, you don't get any of this. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, I maybe I'll take the other question. There was a question and then I'll show you the video. Yeah, uh, Dr. Ho, yes. uh, one question. Uh, the screen just now, like this screen we are seeing now, is it what you see, what the student get? Because uh, they are seeing so many things on the screen. And I would like them just to focus on the, the, the material that I want to display. Right, right. So I think what they will see is they will see this, they will see the chat, they will see the emoticons. If you want them to focus, you can go all the way to the top here and left click on options and you click make full screen. Uh, okay, there is a full screen button somewhere here. I guess that doesn't seem to... Uh, yes, that you click on the person Okay, you, you click on the user toggle here, right? So now you can see if you shut down all of this, this user toggle is to toggle this bar on the left. So you can ask the students to hide it by clicking on the person and you can actually click full screen on the top right here. And then the students will be focused only on your presentation, whether it's video, it's slides, or it's whiteboard, or your sharing on your screen. I right, hope that so, answered your so, question. Uh, yeah, so meaning uh, as default, is what we seen earlier as default. We, we, we give them the full thing and we, yes. we have to guide them to do the full full. Yes, trip. yes, that's right. You guide them to click on this human button on the top left that mm -hmm. hides everything on the left. And then for you, you click make full screen on the right and then it's full screen. And then they don't, they're not even, uh, in this way, they're not even distracted by their Facebook messenger and all that lah, because knowing students, they won't have your screen alone. Lah. They are digital natives, so they have 10 other open screens. There'll be a video of uh, the latest movie running. They'll be Facebook chatting with three friends, and then they'll be uh, eating at the same time. Or, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Pasaman, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. You know, they'll be doing these things uh, in, in parallel. So maybe the onus is as an instructor, you will have to nudge them a little bit. All right, excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Hu. Yes, please. Uh, can you use the... The uh, can I write anything by hand on the on the like a board? I yes, you something. can. Uh, yes, you can. You go to the right hand side. You see my cursor here. The right hand side, the topmost cursor. You left click once. You see the array of options. You okay. can write text, draw lines, or even freehand. You click. And once you click, you can just pretty much write okay. anything here. 
Okay, and you can select the color by left clicking on this one here, as well as the size of your pen. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, more questions? Uh, Dr. Ho. Yes, please. Uh, this this uh, PDF file seems to be a bit small. Is, uh, are we able to like zoom in and all that? And oh, okay, wonderful. Thank you. Yes. And yes. The, the students button, yeah. would they be able to do that, or we need we need to do that for them, right? I believe you are the one in control, yeah. so you will need to do that for them. Yeah. Oh, okay. So so you can switch back to the hand, and if you can actually use the hand icon here. You mm -hmm. hold the left button down and then you can just move it around. Okay, okay. Yeah. thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Ho? Yes? Can we have a... M can, does it allow to have an empty page or empty screen that we can scribble things? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, BBB itself, I think, does not. But if you actually have in your slides, you just create an empty slide, uh, then I think that will appear as an empty slide. <laughs> So make sure to have a blank slide in your uh, presentation when you upload, and then you can always scroll to the blank slide, and then you have a blank board. Okay, thanks. Uh, Dr. Ho. Yes, please. If I, uh, if I want to show them a video, for example, how I can mm -hmm. uh, import the video on the screen? Okay, actions, the plus button here. Okay. Left click on share external video. Uh, you will need to put in the URL of the video. Well, it's, a, it's saved uh, in, in my file document in uh, desktop, for example. It's in your desktop. Uh, so in that case, I would recommend you go for share screen. So you have your video player ready. You go for share screen, select application video, uh, window, and then you select your video player on your desktop. Okay. okay. Thank you. Welcome. Are there more questions? Uh, Dr. Ho, can I just do a quick sharing? Yes, please. Um, just now, in, early in the morning, you somebody asked whether we could upload our uh, materials earlier on. And mm -hmm. uh, I actually did that a few days ago because I'm having a class this week. So I did that a few days ago. And when you prompted, I went back to check. It's actually all gone. So uh, we, I think we cannot upload it too early beforehand because once we end the session, when we go back in, the entire session is gone. Uh, so, yes, yeah. uh, Dr. Chong, thanks for that sharing. You're, yeah. you're right, once you end the session, it's gone. So if yeah. you are the only person in the session and you come out, the session is automatically ended. Right, so there's no way to retrieve back everything that I've uploaded. Lah. So yeah. that means I will, uh, rightly so like you said, go earlier on the same day of the lecture and upload it. It means I cannot upload it a week beforehand. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, thanks for that sharing. So it seems we also have uh, we have also uh, more um, more things to do as uh, in the online delivery. Okay, so my session slides have not appeared yet. Uh, okay, so I'll just go ahead and show you what a video a recorded video looks like in BBB. Okay, so this is an example of a recording that uh, I've done on. Okay, so, so I'm forwarding the recording. You can see the video is uh, like a normal video. And now you can see on the right hand side, this is my student asking me a question by chat. And here I'm actually presenting, uh, writing directly on the slide. The red text is actually in my text. Uh, so here, I think you can hear the students interrupted me with audio to 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 ask a question. And you can see as here I'm sharing a word and I'm actually um, answering their questions. So you can see that as the session goes up, you can actually scroll like all their questions. Okay, so uh, I think all have been able to see. Nah? So in this particular review session, uh, I actually have a recorded video. You can see in real time the slides as well as the documents. So I've been switching back and forth between 
uh, slides, between Word document, between text, uh, back and forth. But what you see is just like a continuous blackboard. Uh, you don't actually see, uh, this is a book for instance, and this is another Word PDF file. Uh, so I'm switching and this is my slides. I'm switching back and forth in this video actually. And at some point I actually had a Word document open and I was actually typing in real time because uh, yeah, here is the Word document. I'm typing in real time because they didn't really uh, get the brief working that I show in the slides. So uh, this was the way. And then you can actually see on the right here all their uh, text questions, the chats. You can hear their audio that when they speak. And if you had a poll, I did not conduct a poll, but if you had conducted a poll, the poll results will appear up here. Okay, so this is an example of a big group button recording. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the session because uh, only after you end the session, the recordings will be made available. So uh, unfortunately, um, I didn't uh, end it a little earlier because I was hoping to actually show you uh, the recording from this morning. Uh, but if those who want to actually see, uh, you can just send me a brief email. I can add you as a, uh, as enroll you as a student in, in the BBB and then you can actually see that. Okay, um, if there are more questions, I'm happy to take. If not, I've got only one other small topic. Um, okay, uh, yes, uh, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, I would like to know just now you mentioned about the statistics. Yes. That, that is for the ULEN X, right? No, that is also for ULEN. The only reason I'm showing in ULEN X is because I have a pre-recorded video there, oh. but you will see the exact same thing in ULEN. It is the same tool. So what's the difference between ULEN and ULEN X? Ah, okay. So this one I'm just uh, sharing a little bit on UTP systems lah, uh, from my understanding. ULEN X is supposed to be an extended version of ULEN for open and distance learning for MSc. This was started in like uh, September, October of last year. And in ULEN X, we actually have subscribed to Wiley Plus, which is uh, making available uh, certain textbooks, full text available to students. So ULEN X, as of last year, end of last year, with the piloting it, uh, UTP making available textbooks from Wiley, full open text, uh, digital copies open on ULEN X, as well as Big Blue Button. But uh, because of the coronavirus, uh, we're all shut at home. Uh, so all these initiatives have started to be ported to ULEARN. So Wiley plus uh, the, the textbooks available, uh, I, um, the Dean Dr. Rosdi has mentioned that at some point the intention also to spread to undergraduate, but they have to pilot and work out all the, the issues and kings first with MSc. Lah. And this is actually being done with the open distance learning MSc programs. I think three have already been approved in UTP and more actually have been applied. Lah. So maybe since uh, March, I know three have been approved, but uh, maybe by now more would have been approved. Lah. So that is the difference. Lah. It's not any kind of uh, anak tiri. Lah. I hope you don't take it that way. I think uh, CGTS was taking it more of like they have to test it because I have to share with you, lah, it was a bit of a painful process. Lah. We had to put up our classes and then in the middle of semester, everything got wiped out when they were doing their porting and things like that. So it was a bit of a pain. Lah. So. Uh, all of uh, most of you did not have to go through that pain. So, uh, hopefully, that we can actually port all this learning uh, to you. Uh, and you know, on this topic, I like to highlight uh, certain features that already uh, I explored in ULEARN X, but it's already available in uh, ULEARN itself. So if you go ahead here and uh, where was I need to find this? I'm sorry. Yeah? Just sometimes I forget where it's. Uh, there is a, a option for you to back up your course. And this is nice because I, I remember some, some years ago, uh, all of us were complaining every semester we had to restart and redo ULEARN itself. Now you do not need to do this anymore. If you click back up here, okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll show you how this is done. If you go to your list of courses, so I'm going to go ahead and back up a course, existing course I have, and I'm going to actually redeploy it into uh, my dummy course under my name. So this is an existing course I ran in uh, January. Uh, it's all, all my materials are all here, my videos and all that. So I'm going to go ahead and show you if you go to administration on the left pane here, and if you click backup, okay, all your settings in this course will be saved. And you can actually just restore all of this into the new version of your course. Everything will be exactly the same without the student uh, submissions and all that. 
So this is very nice. And furthermore, you can actually download a copy of this so that just in case if ITMS system goes down, you also have a, a hard copy on your own hard drive or your own cloud drive and all that. So uh, a lot of the pain has been taken away already. Uh, uh, it's, it's already here, the features already here that allows us to uh, only do it once and then we are able to reuse our materials uh, for every semester. Because uh, ITMS, the way I understand they work is uh, every semester they will create a new course for us. They won't automatically port our course, but they will retain past courses for one year. That is their SOP and they will archive it but they will not, after one year, they will take it away from ULEARN, but they'll archive it. And their archive, uh, their archive uh, timeline is about five years. So right now, again, uh, if you believe this is a valuable initiative, if you believe that it is good for us to archive all of these for audit purposes, then I would ask you, uh, ask your help, please talk to your chairs, get your chairs to raise this matter in uh, UAC or the academic committees so that uh, uh, DPCA and our management will know that uh, most of us would actually like them to uh, save not just the courses, but also allow us to, but also save, uh, uh, allow us to save uh, our student uh, outcomes and all that, and to keep this copy for three years, five years, whatever that duration of audit. Okay, so you can see uh, Tuesday, 12 May 2020 at 10.13 a.m. I have just backed up my entire course here. So this is the name of my course, Backup. I can download it and this will download it to a local copy. I'll get the actual file on my hard drive. Okay. Now I'm going to show you the process of restoring this. And this is what you'll use. Let's say you have painstakingly set this up in January 2020. And now you have a new course. Okay, this is the new course in May 2020. And you don't want to redo all of this again because it's such a pain to set up every topic and to link every video. It takes a lot of time. So what you do is you go to your new course. This is my new course here. You scroll all the way down to administration, you left click on restore, and then you can either import this file from your local copy or ITMS also provide us in ULEARN, they provide us copies saved. So just now I saved this copy here already. If I go ahead and click restore here, and right now I'm just going to restore everything because it's easier to delete individual topics than to add individual topics. So I'm just going to restore everything, continue. Uh, and then I, if I want to keep whatever I have, I just say merge this course. So you can just go through all these settings. You can play around with this. And this is why having a dummy course is very useful. Uh, you can actually play around with the features of backup and restore. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you once you have backup a past course, you can actually just restore it and you don't have to go through the pain of uh, uh, rewriting, uh, redoing everything again. Okay, so there are a lot of sessions now. So you, you have to get finally to the part where it performs the restore. Okay, continue. Okay, great. So now you see uh, my course has been renamed because I asked it to rename and you see the BBB that I added was all here, the offline questions, but the entire course has been reproduced here. See, all my topics, uh, my videos are all here. Okay, so the course has actually been restored, has been added here. So this is a nice feature that you can go ahead and use to uh, actually back up old versions, uh, past versions of your course, and reapply it to existing versions. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. Sorry, that was a digression, but I thought it was a useful digression for many of us uh, because we are starting a new semester soon. So you can go ahead and uh, with some confidence uh, uh, use this, uh, put more time into setting up the ULEARN. Okay, I want to show you one last feature, which is the feature that allows you to set up uh, private tutorial rooms in BBB, if you choose to do so. This is not a necessity. This is just added bells and whistles if you want to do this. So go ahead, go to users under administration, go to users. The first thing you know, need to do is you need to set up groups in your students, among your students. Okay, so here I do have some groups that are set up. Okay, so you can actually see that uh, group B, uh, these two people, uh, group A, these two people. So I can basically auto create groups. Okay, this is if you want to actually create tutorial groups. Nah? So I can actually have a naming scheme, tutorial group 
A like that and auto create based on number of members per group. Let's say I want to have three members per group. Okay, and then I only select student. You can go into that and then group. Uh, I will talk about grouping later, but let me just uh, show you how to generate groups. So you see this is a new group, tutorial group A. I'm asking uh, you learn to automatically create groups for my students. And then just go a grouping name. So uh, I select no grouping. First, submit. OK, so you see it has generated uh, two groups for me uh, with three students, but that because I only have five enrolled students, it's three and two. No? So it's generated this automatically for me. OK, so I can then apply these groups to big blue button. So I can just go all the way now here. Now I want to start a new big blue button uh, uh, class. I turn editing on. And I'll just go ahead and add an activity and resource. I add big blue button here. Go ahead and edit. Everything is the same. Make sure it's room activity uh, with recordings. Make sure best practice, you put the date, the, the time, and the topic. Send notification so students will know. In the room settings, put the course name. Put the time and date and topic so students will be oriented. And then the only difference is uh, under common module settings, pick visible groups. Okay. In the earlier beginning of today's session, I told you to pick no groups. Now you want to have separate tutorial group sessions. You pick visible groups, okay? And then you just put, uh, you pick visible groups, and then you just click save and return to course. Everything else is the same, but now I want to actually have individual tutorial groups. You pick visible groups, save and return to course. Okay, just waiting for a big blue button to. Okay, so seek your patience. I don't know why it's a little bit slow. Okay, great. So now you see that, uh, uh, yeah, I, I clicked so many times, so I had created so many sessions. Uh, so you, if you click on one of these groupings demo, what you will see is there's an additional drop down button here. So students will have the choice to go into a room, a BBB room where everyone is there, or they have a choice to go into a sub room with only their group members. So they have an option to go into two different rooms. So they can choose that option and join the session. So that is the only difference. Okay. The difference is you're allowing your students by using the grouping, you allow the students to have a private discussion in a private BBB room where only the group members are present or they have a choice also to join a group with the whole class present. Yeah. Okay, are there any questions on this? Uh, Dr. Hu. Uh, yes. Uh, can you just recap uh, how you start opening uh, the, uh, the session, first class session from BBB? Uh, because I missed this point. Uh, I'm, I'm, I can briefly mention this, but uh, uh, I, I think you should also uh, you do, look, go through the video. Le. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, you can add activity or resource. Okay. Uh, you can click big blue button here. You can add. Okay. There are a bunch of basic settings. You pick a room activity with recordings. You can add the date, the time, as well as the topic. Make sure you click send notifications. In your activity room settings, please make sure you enter your course name, date, time, topic, and ensure that session is recorded. And if you have already set up tutorial groups, you can actually uh, 
uh, go to common model settings, you select visible groups, and that's it. Uh, you can click save and return to course, uh, and then you should be able to see your classroom uh, set up already. Yeah. There is a there is a slides presentation for this step by step. Ah uh, no, it's this morning's one. Oh. Uh, Sita will make it available. Thank you. Yeah, because I have a meeting that I have to get to at ten thirty, so uh, I will need to end the session. Thank you very much. Okay. So if there are any final questions, uh, you, if Victor, who, you Victor, Victor, who? Yes, please go ahead. Hello, Victor. Who? Hello. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, regarding to the group, the grouping for the tutorial. For example, if I have like more than five groups, so for me, I can join any group from this. this I have not tested this, Dr. Aziz, but mm. my assumption is you can join one group at one time. So you as an instructor, mm. you may be able to jump between groups, but only one group at one time. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. Okay, welcome. So as a final parting message, I recommend all of you create one additional big blue button session with no time schedule. Because uh, this big blue button, if you don't have uh, any restriction on time, uh, this allows the student to actually use big blue button to come online anytime so that they can do their group discussions. Because uh, you know our students are far apart they have no very, very limited options to actually communicate. So I also recommend as a best practice, you create one session, call it student conversation, where the students can agree whatever time they want to meet at 10 p.m. or whatever date, they just agree, they log on the same time, they can talk to each other through Big Blue Button without you having to be present. So I really recommend that you open one session for all courses where students can come in at any time and they can have their own conversations because all they need to do is they need to log in, join the BBB room. They need to enable their audio and they can talk to themselves already. Yeah, so I think that would be something that's very useful and they are able to actually uh, turn on their video. They can actually share with each other. So you're giving them, if you actually set up just like this, uh, you know, the same style, but you just said this room is specifically for them to come and uh, share and do any kind of group discussion. You're making available to them uh, a good uh, video conferencing software that where they don't have to uh, install anything, they can just log on to ULEARN. So that's my final recommendation for best practice. So I can take one final question before I sign up. Uh, Dr. Eric, uh, yes. for the student conversation, um, Let's say in my example, I have five groups, so this would be pertaining to how I've set it up as per from the earlier part, isn't it? So this student conversation would be individualized for each group, correct? Uh, yes, Dr. Anna, you have hit the jackpot. If you <laughs> had spent more time setting up individual tutorial groups, then the students uh -huh. can actually join their individual tutorial groups and they don't have any concern that some other student will butt in or clashing. Mm -hmm. So it's akin mm -hmm. to if you had invested more time to help them set up, they will have their private session. But if you run out of time for some reason, uh, then it's like, you mm -hmm. know, you just make one room available for them and whoever is in at that time, they will have to nice. uh, come in and things like that. Yeah. So it's quite yes. free and easy line in a it's sense. It's quite free and easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a question okay. of whether you make one room or multiple rooms available to them. So okay. the best, of course, as you mentioned, if you can group them in advance, they have their private mm -hmm. session. This will be the best. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so uh, thank you all for your attention. Uh, I think uh, Sita will make a video of this morning's uh, a presentation available and there's also the earlier video which I uh, had shared on the 9th of April. I think that video has also been made available. Uh, that is a longer two hour session, exactly the same material, but at a more pace, uh, slower pace because that was the first presentation. Uh, so uh, I thank you for your attention and your time and uh, I hope uh, we all can, uh, you know, try to uh, explore these features and, uh, you know, the good things maybe we can uh, uh, relate to our chair and maybe uh, try to, uh, as, as I mentioned, if you see there's value in using BBB for audits and
for evidence of our teaching, um, uh, do make a mention to our chair so that they can actually raise this up to UTP management so that we can shape a little bit more our uh, processes, academic processes. Okay, uh, I pass over to uh, Mr. Reza or uh, Seta for any final words. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Ho. Uh, thank you very much. All right, thank so, you. Thank you, Dr. Ho. Thank you, very much. Thank, you. thank you, Dr. Ho. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Ho. Thank you. 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 Thank